So how is Prez Beyond laser blended vision different from monovision? And I hear this all the time at ophthalmic conferences because monovision is something that's been used very commonly for many years in uh, contact lenses and following cataract surgery and indeed following laser eye surgery. So monovision is asking each eye to do a different job for a patient who has presbyopia. So this is the older age group of patients who've lost their ability to accommodate, their ability to shift focus from distance to near. And what we do is set one eye up, usually their dominant eye, for good distance vision, and then their non-dominant eye for reading vision. To have a crisp distance focus, we need a, a zero prescription in the dominant eye. And for really crisp focus at, say, 50 centimetres away, we need a, a prescription of minus two short-sightedness. So with monovision, the patient will have two distinct points of focus with a big gap in between. And their brain has to try and integrate these two images. And not everyone can do it. Only about a third to 40% of people can perform that task. And even if they can, there are some issues with maintaining good depth perception, good 3D vision. It can be degraded by having such a big gap between the image quality of, of distance and near for, for each eye. Presbyon blended vision takes this principle of asking each eye to do a different job, but links the two eyes up by using a controlled amount of an imperfection in the optical system. Spheric aberration is an imperfection that our visual systems are used to dealing with. So when we accommodate as, as, as young people, as young adults, when we're taking our focus from distance to near, we're increasing positive spheric aberration. That, that's part of how we create the near focus. So our brains know how to tune spheric collaboration. Positive spheric collaboration, if you can, if you can picture it on a, a lens, how it's working, it's as if the light rays at the edge of the lens are being refracted and bent more powerfully than the light rays in the middle. And it just creates this little cone of confusion, this area where the light rays aren't all intersecting at exactly the same point. But our brains are are quite good at dealing with a little bit of this and retaining the information. And what it does is increase the distance over which an image is in focus. So if you increase the spheric collaboration of the distance eye in a, in a monovision type setup and increase the depth of vision on the near eye, you can create a situation where they overlap because you don't have to pull the reading eye back so far in order to attain useful near vision. The spheric collaboration will reach back for you. This makes it very different. Firstly, it means that these patients have much better depth perception. They've got much better 3D because each eye is bringing something to the party at those intermediate distances. Secondly, it means that the acceptance of this optical setup is much higher. It goes up to 97%. So the vast majority of us can take this, can accept it, and say, actually, that feels good. There is a process of adaptation, and it's, again, it's, it's different for everybody. So some people, it's almost like putting on a pair of comfy slippers, and off they go, and it feels very, very, very natural. And for some people, it can take three, six, even nine months to, to bed in and feel comfortable. And they'll have moments where it jars slightly, where they're not quite sure which eye is doing what. But, but their brain will get there. It'll blend them, and... Uh, become more and more seamless at, at shifting focus across the distances across the two eyes. So they, 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 they really are fundamentally different approaches, even though they share the principle, monovision, distance eye, near eye, yes, presbyon blended vision, distance eye, near eye. But the controlled amount of spheric collaboration allows the link up and the overlap in the presbyon blended vision that, that is different and that makes it much more acceptable and, and more, effect, uh, more, more effective. Now I know that's been a long, quite technical explanation of the differences between monovision and presbyon blended vision. Essentially, 
With Monovision, each eye is doing a completely different job and we're asking people to cope with it. With blended vision, we're joining the two eyes up and they're working together in concert to create a nice seamless view of the world.